Hello, Mordrem here. Today I want to provide you with a summary of the dev stream. For this, I have compiled basically this word file, this doc file, and I will be going from top to bottom to explain to you what I had found out in those two hours. First, a few basic infos. You can find this actual file on my Discord. I will upload it right there. Next, I will provide you with additional thoughts to the bullet points here. And third, this one is really promising. So let's go. First up, later today, in the evening, or in Europe it's in the night, middle of the night, they will be dropping a patch. This patch will not be as huge as the last one, but will also provide us with additional balance changes and changes to health tight chests. Those will now be able to drop unique items, which they did not before the patch. Another very important information is, whispers do not drop uniques. So if you have a finished whisper and you do this one just for farming uniques, you're basically wasting your time. And this will not be changed even now. Something else that's really important is the lock inventory feature. Now this will be probably Mark's favorite. They had mentioned this one specifically when talking about the patch, but I'm not entirely sure, 100% sure that this one will be implemented with the patch. So this might just be something they have been working on. Next, after this patch, the updates are going to be much more controlled. This will be done to just not break specific builds. However, specific things that are completely broken will be addressed as emergency patches. And another thing that will be addressed with the next patches is going to be the endgame rewards. Now, enough with that, let's start with the season. Now, the season will start at the 20th of July with the big balance patch, with the new unique items, with the new unique aspects, and the balance changes for the classes is going to drop on the 18th of July and will be accessible on Eternal Realms. So you don't actually need to roll a new character for trying out new stuff. However, the seasonal content that I will be showing you later can only be accessed on a new character on that specific seasonal realm. Now, as far as the story goes, the events take place after the base game. For this, a character named Cormant will contact us it's an ex-priest of the Cathedral of Light, and he is basically a noob, so instead of getting good, he's summoning us. The story of this season starts in Kovishad, and it's supposed to be a side story, not a continuation of the main plotline. Every character is also going to start at level 1. As for the mechanics of this season, we will be getting new powers, legendary aspects, uniques, gems, upgrade systems, and even more. Now, as far as the gems go, there is something special here specifically special elite enemies. Those will have malignant modifiers. As far as I have understood this one, elite enemies can spawn with those modifiers in every single dungeon, in the overworld, doesn't matter. Everywhere is fair game for them. Those modifiers are split into four types. Brutal, Vicious, Wrathful and the fourth unknown one. They have not shown this one. Killing those enemies will drop a heart, which can then be made useful in a ritual. So after an enemy dies, they drop the heart and you need to activate this. This empowers the enemy by giving it an additional level and pulls in new enemies from around the zone. Those will then be empowered by the specific elite modifier that this specific enemy is imbued with. After killing the elite enemy, it will drop a caged heart. Now those caged hearts act like gems. Special sockets and gear will appear, specifically on the jewelry, meaning rings and your amulet. When looking at the character screen, we see the weapons, as well as the armor, this one is cut off, but basically those slots do not roll gems in colored forms. Only the jewelry comes with those specific sockets. On this picture, you can see a caged heart of the Picana. This one again specifies jewelry is the only equipment slot where we can find those sockets. The item has an item power, a specific level, and requires a specific character level. It is also account bound, so you cannot trade it with other players. All of those hearts come with a very powerful effect. For this one, it's critical strikes, generate electricity on a charged enemy for 3 seconds, and arcs of lightning strike other enemies that are also charged. So this one is a vicious heart, requires a red or orange socket, so we see one here and the character then slots this one into the ring. Now there are also wrathful hearts. Those have a white color. There are no white sockets, but those hearts can then be socketed into any colored socket, meaning in a purple one, in a red one, or the fourth missing color. Now, 
is the item power of the heart increased by the level of the enemy you have slain? Yes, they confirmed this one. So now there is a purpose to push High Nightmare Dungeons because you can then access better hearts in those dungeons. Another important mention, there are 32 new powers and those powers are equivalent to aspects. So very powerful effects that will alter the playstyle of your character. Now, what if you do not need those hearts? You can, after finishing the story, break those hearts into special materials. Those special materials can then be crafted into invokers and can then be used in malignant tunnels, which are special new dungeons you can find in the open world. Once you progress through the dungeon, which has new assets for basically a ton of different enemies, you will find a special mass. This mass has multiple outgrowths, which can then be interacted with. Those have a prefix like brutal, vicious or wrathful, and after interacting with this one, they imbue the mass in the middle. This will then spawn an enemy with the modifier, meaning it gives you access to a way to farm specific colors for specific hearts. This is a way to target farm those hearts. Then there is also going to be additionals. So a new boss, specifically they only mentioned this one. I personally am guessing this one is another pinnacle boss. So something that's very hard content. There will be new legendary items and powers, new uniques and balance changes. All of those will be available at the 18th of July. So two days before the season actually starts. So this means all of those changes will be available at the Eternal Realm for you to explore, for you to test. However, like I already mentioned, the seasonal specific content, like the hearts, are not going to be available on the Eternal Realms. Now, as far as seasonal structure goes, there will be seven chapters you have to complete in a Battle Pass style system. Here I have to mention something. You don't actually need the Battle Pass. The Battle Pass is only for cosmetics and you will gain access to the seasonal content regardless if you own the Battle Pass or do not. Now, completing those seven chapters will unlock specific rewards. Those objectives can be something like collect herbs, collect ore, finish dungeons, finish a side quest or finish a cellar. And the rewards can be greater favors that you need to progress the battle pass, caches with herbs or, or items, and new aspects that are introduced to the game. Two examples that are shown for this one is for example one for the barbarian. So whenever you charge, you summon four additional ancients that deal 50% of the normal damage. And here is another one specifically for the druid. Poison creeper also casts landslides in a cycle around you and earth skills deal 10% increased damage to poisoned enemies. Meaning those new aspects can be very easily obtained through just progressing through the chapters of the season. The actual season pass looks completely different. On this screen you can see the season journey. Chapter 1, 44%. This one is accessed through this window. On the bottom side you have the battle pass. This battle pass has free and premium rewards all of which are cosmetic rewards. Now, the reward structure is as follows. Free stuff is low fantasy and epic stuff that glows and has like insane spikes is going to be premium stuff. Again, everything you find here is cosmetic. Now, what if you're starting fresh? Are you locked out of those rewards because you cannot access the seasonal content yet? Because you need to finish the main campaign first, right? Well, no, because every objective you can find in the seasonal journey is going to be able to be completed during the story, during the base game. There will be three additional chapters at the end that look a little bit different. They didn't go into specifics in this one, but I guess those are tied to the seasonal mechanic. Something you need to know, if you beat the story right now on the Eternal Realm, you can skip it on all characters in the future, be it in the season, Eternal Realm or your gaming cave doesn't matter, you will be able to skip it. There will be additional info at the end, specifically on how to migrate the data of your character to the servers, because this one is not planned. So they implemented a quick fix to this one and it's not perfect, so you need to do something extra. But before all that, there is a blessing system. So when we look at this screen, we see seasonal blessings. There are five to boot and some kind of currency. Now completing the battle pass and getting to a specific stage like so, on the 8 here, you will see this powder, that's the currency. This will be able to obtain with a free battle pass. However, you can actually skip the pass, skip levels. 
This means if you pay and swipe the battle pass, you're unlocking all of those early. This means your character will not get immediate power, but will progress faster because you're paying for the battle pass to skip specific tiers. Now I will show you the blessings first. There is five to boot. One boosts the experience you gain from monsters. One boosts the amount of gold earned through a vendor sale. One boosts the chance to salvage rare materials from an item. One boosts the elixir duration. And the last one gives you a boost to the percent chance to drop powerful malignant hearts. So basically all of those speed up your progression. None of which boost your power directly. And there is something else. Smoldering Ashes, unlocked at reward level 8, require a character level of 40 to be upgraded to the first stage. This means you need to level your character to a specific level to unlock further enhancements in the blessing system. So you cannot swipe your card and get your character to the maximum benefits of those five blessings. We need to actually play the game and level your character. So it's not as pay to win as initially thought. Some additional info, the blessings increase linearly. So if you have 5% here and those times four, that's 20% at the end. So a 20% boost to the malignant heart drops or a 20% boost to the gold earned through sales or a 12% boost to the XP you earn from monster kills. Next, I'm going to go over eternal characters. First of all, what does carry over? The campaign, all the fog of war and the altars of Lilith all carry over. So if you have all of those at 100%, you will not have to do this again. However, side quests, strongholds, dungeons and waypoints all need to be discovered and done again. Now there is a special rule that needs to be followed to migrate the character data of the character. Because they have not expected players to not want to do that again next season, they had to implement a quick fix. This means if you have done everything on one singular character, you don't have to lock into every character, just this one is sufficient. But if you have done Skosklin 1 and Fractured Peaks in 1, you need to log in into the Skosklin character and then into the Peak character to migrate the data so you don't have to do the stuff again in the seasonal content. Like I said, side quests, dungeons, strongholds and waypoints need to be discovered and done again. Now, as far as the Renown goes, you will unlock one additional ability point per zone and one additional potion charge per zone if you have the Altars of Lilith and the Fog of War unlocked. And you will be missing around 30 to 40 Renown per zone, so you just do one to two dungeons and you are golden. You will unlock the five additional ability points afterwards. So it's very easy to get access to those ability points again. The Paragon points are a little bit more tricky. As far as feedback goes, they called to action to us. They're trying to implement stuff as fast as possible based on our feedback. Doesn't matter where we provide this one. This can be on Reddit, the forum, Twitter, YouTube videos, doesn't matter. If your feedback provided to them, they will try to look for it and they will try to think about implementations for this one. If enough players want that. Their motto is, can it be done now? One example for this one is the dungeon teleport to Nightmare Dungeons. It was a quick implementation, but they made it work so we can teleport to dungeons now. However, they are still improving this one. So the next update might bring the teleport directly into the dungeon. So we don't need to face outside the open world into the dungeon anymore. The Renown carryover for the Altus Lilith and Fog of War is also a quick implementation. That's why we need to migrate those characters. So provide them with feedback as much as possible. And to finish up this whole thing, let's go over the Q&A. First of all, respecting characters, they told us cost and user experience is a concern. So they are going to implement a scroll of amnesia as a reward for seasonal chapters. On use, this one resets the whole character, skill points and paragons altogether. So you don't have to click on every single ability and every single skill point and passive point. Then seasonal mechanics. Will those be implemented to the eternal realm? Initially, no. However, if it's cool or valued by the players, they will be thinking about introducing this one to the base game. But there is something they need to think about. That's power creep. It's a concern to them. So they do not want to pack the game full of mechanics. As far as buffs and changes are concerned, that's another question that was asked. There will be now specific time windows we can expect patches. It will be structured. Not like with the last couple weeks where we got hotfix after hotfix. Big buffs and nerfs will only be for extreme outliers. 
and everything else will be at specific points, maybe in the half season or at the end of seasons, in the pre-season. Another thing of concern was stash space. We will get more in the future, but there was no definitive answer. So it's probably cash based. So how much time is there between seasons? There will be at minimum 12 weeks with some seasons taking longer. And is there a new class in the works for Diablo 4? Nothing to announce at the time. So if you like this summary, you can find it in the Discord channel and I will also upload at Google Drive or Dropbox. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I will provide a link down below so you can get access to this file. If you like this, please leave a like, please leave a comment and subscribe. You can also donate me or join the channel membership, but only if you have the spare coin. See you next time and bye.